This is Mrs. Wainwright's math class, chapter three, facts and vocabulary to study. Our first vocabulary word is decimal. A decimal is anything that is less than one. It is a part of a whole, not a whole. It's less than a whole, it's just a part of a whole. For example, here I have a whole chocolate bar. I break my chocolate bar up into 10 equal parts. And I'm going to shade in all of the parts because I have all of them. I have all 10 parts of the chocolate bar. So Mrs. Wainwright has one whole chocolate bar. And I decide that I'm going to share some of my chocolate bar with Mrs. Castellano. So I draw for Mrs. Castellano her chocolate bar plate, but notice that it's empty. Right now she has no chocolate there. So technically she has zero whole chocolate bars. So I'm going to share some of my pieces with her. So I take three of my little pieces away and I give them to Mrs. Castellano. How much chocolate bar does, do I have left? Well, let's count my little pieces. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven tenths of a chocolate bar left. So if I look at just my chocolate bar, do I have a whole chocolate bar? No, I have zero whole chocolate bars and seven tenths. Because it takes ten pieces to make a whole and I have seven of them. Mrs. Castellano, does she have any whole chocolate bars? No, she has zero whole chocolate bars and how many tenths? One, two, three. She has zero and three tenths. So decimal is a number that's less than a whole. The next vocabulary word, word we have is decimal point. A decimal point is the point that separates whole numbers from decimal numbers. And a decimal point has a special name when we read the number. That name is and. For example, we read this number one and five tenths. We don't say one decimal five tenths. We say one and five tenths because the decimal point's name is and. This number we read as 23 and 74 hundredths. And this number we read as 0 and 968 thousandths. So when you read a decimal number, its name is and. An important note to remember, when writing decimals, we can have no cheap decimals. Okay, decimals need to look like decimals. And this is the first example. That decimal, you can barely see it. So you can't argue and say, oh, it's there, it's there. The teacher needs to be able to see it. So no cheap decimals. In this next example, I see it, but I can't tell if it's a decimal or a comma. And if I'm not sure, I have to mark it wrong. So no cheap decimals, they need to look like a decimal. In my third example, well, that certainly looks like a decimal. I can definitely tell it that 6 and 5 tenths. I don't need to use a magnifying glass to find it. It definitely looks like a decimal. That's good. So no cheap decimals. However, on the other hand, we also want to make sure that we have no bolder decimals. For example, right here, that decimal is way too big. So no cheap decimals. We need to make them normal size. And here's a reminder to study. Everything to the right of the ones column, which is also to the right of the decimal point, is a decimal and has a value that's less than one. So everything to the right of the ones column and the right of the decimal point is like less than a whole Hershey bar. And in word form or when we're saying it, these numbers all have THS on the end. For example, tenths means that it takes 10 pieces to make a whole. So tenths are less than one. Or the other example is hundredths. It means it takes 100 pieces to make a whole. So hundredths with the THS at the end are less than one. Thousandths with the THS at the end means it takes 1,000 pieces to make a whole. So thousandths are less than one. So basically anything that ends with THS stands for a decimal, and that's how many pieces it takes to make one whole. THS means that it's less than one whole. Our next vocabulary word is equivalent, and equivalent means equal to. And as a review of something we already know, in a whole number, beginning zeros do not change the value. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. 
zero zero seven is equivalent to or equal to seven. In zero zero seven I have zero hundredths and zero tens, but I have seven ones. And in the plane number seven, I have seven ones. Each case I have seven ones. Zero zero seven is also equivalent to zero 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 seven. The beginning zeros don't change the value. In zero zero seven I still only have seven whole Hershey bars, and in zero 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 seven I still only have seven ones or seven one whole Hershey bars. So either way, they're both seven ones, they're equivalent. By the same token, forty is equivalent to zero zero four zero. They both have forty whole Hershey bars in them. So in whole numbers, beginning zeros do not change the value. It keeps the value the same because they mean nothing. So we also have the words equivalent decimals. And equivalent decimals are decimals that name the same amount. They're equal to each other. The difference is in decimals, the numbers may not sound the same even though they are equivalent. So let's see how that works. Let's take a look at this example. The top picture and the bottom picture have the same amount of chocolate, right? The shaded part is the amount of chocolate. They have the same amount of chocolate. It looks slightly different, but you can tell that it's the same amount. In the top picture, I have one whole Hershey bar, and, so I'll put my decimal, it takes ten pieces to make a whole Hershey bar, and I have two of them, so I have one and two tenths. That's my top picture. That's equivalent to my bottom picture, where I have one whole Hershey bar, and it takes one hundred pieces to make a whole Hershey bar, and I have twenty of those. So I have one and twenty hundredths in the bottom picture. But notice in the ones column, they're both a one, and in the tenths column, they're both a two. The hundredths column on the top, I don't have anything. On the bottom, I have zero. Well, nothing and zero are the same. And we can see for the picture, they're the same amount of chocolate. So one and two tenths is equivalent to one and twenty hundredths. So while in a whole number, beginning zeros don't change the value, in a decimal number, ending zeros don't change the value. So one and two tenths is equivalent to one and twenty hundredths because that ending zero doesn't change the value in a decimal. And eighty-four and three hundredths is equivalent to eighty-four and thirty thousandths because that ending zero doesn't change the value in a decimal. And nine and seventy-six hundredths is equivalent to nine and seventy-six hundred thousandths because the ending zeros don't change the value in a decimal. So please make sure to go back again and review these facts and vocabulary to study. You do need to know all of these items for your test.